Hello everyone! Today we are gonna take a look on how to use uh, uh, displacement maps or height maps and heat maps to create um, masks to use to make a simple landscape. Or actually, like you can go as complicated as you want, but we're gonna do like a simple example. So you might be wondering why are we in Photoshop? What are we doing? So you can use any image editing software that you prefer. I'm just using Photoshop, but we're just going to do something very simple. The concept is that uh, in 3D Canvas, as you can see, we can use height maps and heat maps to create terrain and mask these tiles. So let me show you what I mean. If I... Um, if I disable gravity, so you can see better, you can see that this repeat tile, while it's as big as the whole scene, it's only drawing uh, the tiles on a specific pattern. And if you're asking yourself how, uh, it's very simple. It's because in the advanced settings here, we have the height map here set, which is the same of the map that's below. So we can leverage this feature to uh, make our maps in some kind of 2D software and then like make them 3D. And you'll understand what I mean if you uh, haven't already uh, got what, uh, what we're gonna do. So let's go back to Photoshop. Let's make a new image. Uh, we can just make it like uh, 1K by 1K. You can create uh, basically kind of the size you want. We're gonna have one layer, we're gonna unlock it. So this is gonna be our map. So let's rename this uh, terrain. This is gonna be our hills or whatever that is. So now we're gonna grab the brush tool here and we are gonna paint our terrain. So I'm just gonna use this soft round and probably can make it like quite, uh, quite, quite big for the terrain. I'm not gonna do anything very precise. I'm not a much an, of an artsy person, but okay. So we can go this way, and everything that's black is gonna be high, and everything that's white is gonna be low. So we're gonna make like some kind of hill here. We're gonna have something plain on the bottom, and maybe something else this way. And there we go. It's gonna be kind of like canyony slash hill, uh, depending on. But we now have a basic terrain. So once we have our terrain, we're gonna make a new layer in Photoshop. And we're gonna select it and just use the bucket tool to make it completely white. We are gonna set the opacity here to like kind of be see-through so we can see what we have below it. And we're gonna go back to our brush. So let's say that now we want to make something like uh, trees. So maybe we want like a, a small forest here and maybe even here. Perfect. And just we're just we're just gonna call this trees. And then we're gonna make another layer. Still set the opacity to be a bit low, select the layer, bucket tool, uh, make it white, back to the brush. And now we can hide our trees if we want, better visibility. And maybe we now want some uh, pebbles in the bottom or something like that. So let's do this and we do, we select the black again and we paint this kind of pebble thing perfect and now maybe we want also so we call this a uh, rocks and then we might also want like grass so we're gonna make another layer select the white make it white go back to black pick the brush tool set the opacity to be a bit lower I'm gonna hide this and let's say uh, I want my grass to be roughly, so I'm gonna enable the trees and I'm gonna have my grass be kind of where the trees are, but a bit more, but like not on the edges. 
something like this and something like this here and then I'm gonna hide my trees because I want some grass on the sides of this uh, canyon thing that I've made in the middle. So I'm gonna take a smaller brush I'm just gonna do this. Now keep in mind I'm just terrible at drawing so uh, don't judge. Perfect and now we have our layers. I'm gonna set the opacity of this grass layer to be a bit more and I want the grass to be a bit smoother so I'm gonna apply a blur um, a blur to this. Not too blurry, not too little, something like this. Okay, so now we have our images, we can set all our layers to be visible and set the opacity back to be 100. And now I'm gonna export every one of these layers as a separate image and I'm gonna join you back in Foundry once I've uploaded my images into Foundry. And now we are back in Foundry, I just have a blank scene, I just enabled these three checkboxes and didn't do anything else. So let's see how we're gonna use our stuff. So first, we want our terrain. So let's open the basic shapes. Uh, we're gonna get the, um, the flat plane for shaders, should be enough. And we are gonna use our macros. Uh, we've used them before, but as a reminder, uh, not 3D maps, the macros. So we select the tile and we fit tile to scene. Uh, actually, we do want to stretch this. So it's now stretched. We're probably gonna need to uh, scale it up a bit. And now we go into the advanced and we pick the height map. So I go into my, um, into my folder where I've saved all my height maps, assuming uh, I remember, there we go, my map using height maps. And as you can see, these are just the layers that you see, saw before in Photoshop. Select the terrain and apply. And now my terrain is applied. As you can see, it's as we made it in Photoshop. And I'm gonna apply a material. I'm just gonna find some grass. So now, time to add the grass. So we go to Tiles, Nature, I'm just gonna look for grass. I'm just gonna plonk it here. We're gonna do a couple of, of uh, modifications on the settings here. So we want the repeat. Tile scale is probably gonna be like 0 0.2. We're gonna give it like a 0 0.2 gap as well. Give it all the randomness and update it. And now we go back to the macros and we do the stretch tile to scene. And we have our grass field. Now, if we go into the advanced settings and we go to the, this, to the height map, we can select our grass image that we made before. So let's get to the, um, to the folder and let's pick the grass. We select and we update. And you can see that the grass now follows the image that we set. Now, depending on how much uh, between black and white we make the, the more like non-straight colors part, uh, it would decrease the chance of grass spawning there, basically. And now we can enable the gravity. And wabam, we have our grass and we can go on. So we can put this a bit lower. And now let's go to the trees. So we add the trees. Let's go back to the tiles and go to nature and we grab like uh, one of these. And for this grass tile, we also want to disable movement and sight because we don't really care. And we go to 3D, we go to repeat. Uh, this is going to be quite bigger, probably. And uh, a pretty decent gap. We apply. And this seems like a normal size. We go back to the macro, stretch to scene, execute. We have a bunch of trees. And now we randomize everything. 
gonna apply just to show you what it's doing here and then we're gonna go to the advanced settings and set the height map so back to asset 3d models and I got it in here and we grab the trees just to keep as a reference this is the image and we apply now we only have trees on those areas so we can also alter the um, keep in mind that the height map is not like 100% precise because of the gradient in color so you can see that we have like a, a tree here so for reference if you were uh, to make it uh, a bit more polished I would skip some of the grayness there in the center because it gives it does give it a very low chance of spawning trees there so I'm gonna change the seed so we can get some uh, different RNG on this can we have some uh, good RNG here okay and now we will just enable the gravity and we got our trees and the last part is the rocks so I'm gonna go here go back to my tiles go to nature I'm just gonna grab like literally a random rock maybe this because we're gonna just do uh, some kind of pebbles I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna basically do the same exact pro process repeat set all the randomness see how big it is it's uh, probably, probably a bit smaller but we probably want to set the size a bit later and we go into the macros and we do the stretch we execute we have a bunch of rocks and now we want to make probably the gap higher the scale smaller okay seems like a reasonable thing let's make it a bit bigger so we can see it better grab the height map There we go, rocks. You can see that they follow the path. And now we enable gravity and bam. So because of my poor drawing skill, uh, this thing is not exactly perfect. But if you were able to actually draw and not be uh, trash like me, surely you can apply these tools way better than I can. Uh, but yes, so this is how you can use height maps to basically make the tiling process way more precise, easier, and fun to work with. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.